Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the North American Challenger League Season 1 Playoffs. We're here in the Grand Finals. It's a best of five as Team Coast take on Complexity. Now let's go ahead and see if this uh, defensive spread from both sides, will we see offense, will we see the invasion? Usually teams have been a little bit more passive for the game one. And also something we didn't point out in Champion Select, MIA running support Elise. Support Elise is something we've seen a few times. I believe Daydreaming actually showed that on the big stage back in March uh, in the LCS for his first game. And it is something that it is incredibly high damage, incredibly single target oriented, and definitely focused at trying to win the lane rather than transition into a big team fighting monster like uh, Sona or a um, Zyra. All right, guys, and if also you don't know who we are, I am Egad. In the middle of me is Studio. You can't see that just yet, but at the end of the table, we'll be rapid casting as well. We are here to bring you the TriCast for the Grand Finals, and yeah, that Elise, like you said before, it's going to be very interesting to see how it does go off. That percentage damage, Neurotoxin, Venom Spite, as well as Repel for some sneaky uh, baits, if anything. And also, they both started Dorm Shield, so Daydream and MIA, kind of with a similar start. Yeah, so Krepo's going to be really sad out there, but for the purposes of tonight's games, that's actually going to be really cool to see uh, not only just the Dorian Shields start, but also support Elise. I remember way back in the day, I think the first support Elise I s uh, I've ever seen was uh, on uh, Samsung Galaxy Blue, I believe it was. They added a support player named Ming-9, and he crushed everyone's support Elise, and the people are like, hey, this is really good, and it had its moment, but then kind of died off with a lot of the support changes. But coming back, man, MIA is an innovator, and we'll have to see what he sees in support Elise here today. Now we won't see the support Elise coming out in a 2v2. We can see uh, Complexity already grouped up in the, top, in the top lane. Looks like they're aiming for a 2v1. However, Coast Roaming at the last second could transition. And actually, this is going to be a late blue steal. All right, they're going to look to mosey on their way in. There's a ward over the wall right now, so they will spot him out. Ninja Ken going to go to the wall, drop his own ward, spot them. And this is going to be the smite steal. The death sentence does not connect. They're going to look to pull this away as the Undertow, Undertow. does connect onto MIA. It's going to force Ninja Ken back out. They're not going to... Oh, maybe they're going to look for the smite steal. Intendedex is tanking it up. There's going to be explosive shot applied to Daydream, and he's going to back on out. And it will be the smite steal over to Ninja Ken. <laughs> no, it's Daydreaming. So, oh, wait, no, wait. Daydreaming got it with the flame. All right. No, he, he started death sentence. He, he got, got it with the, the auto, auto attack. attack. <laughs> All right, so... Blue buff will be transferred over to that top 2v2, <laughs> and uh, both junglers kind of out of luck. <laughs> uh, uh, Ninja Kinda didn't, didn't actually get a chance to use Smite, so a little bit miss Smite there by Nintendo Dex, <laughs> but still, blue buff on Coast. Yeah. And uh, blue buff going to a Thresh, it's actually going to be very, very cool for him top lane, because you can just play super aggressively, toss out death sentences left and right. Mm. Uh, Jinte? <laughs> Getting poked out heavily, Satchel Charge Swords is terrible, but he'll chuck some potions and be just fine. Yeah, that is Shipper getting that early level 2, and uh, Jinte doesn't really have a good response to it. Probably started to command protect, so his defensive option is all he has compared to the Bouncing Bomb, compared to the Satchel Charge, and actually hook on the MIA. Yes, and it's top lane. Didn't actually mean all that much. You're not going to dive the turret at level 1. They didn't actually level 2 off of getting that blue buff, so you're going to have a little bit of an advantage. Bottom lane, you can see a lot of minions at Zion Spartan's back, so not really something Mega Zero wants to go into just yet. Yeah, and uh, with that, the jungler's kind of a little, little behind now, but we're going to see them just farm up and go towards everything they can. They both have ghosts, so no flashes for them, so they're going to be just mowing on through everywhere. They both have a way to just <laughs> gap close the Undertale, as well as Ninja Kid with that uh, ultimate and the charge both of this kid. Anyway, so we'll see how they do it. And you can see Ninja Ken's already taken a lot of damage in the jungle at half HP. Uh, also low mana, but he does get a blue buff compared to... Uh, Unfortunate Nintendo Dex, who he himself is also uh, quite a bit of HP, but low mana as well. So going to be slower starts for both the junglers, which means that that crucial level 6 for Ninja Ken and his awesome Hecarim ganks is going to be delayed by a little bit. However, Nintendo Dex can actually benefit from this if he can go for some early ganks, toss out that Undertow, and actually Jinte in the mid lane. Actually, no, Ninja Ken didn't get blue buff, no. because Jinte has, yeah. has blue buff. Yeah, Jinte started with that in the beginning. It was actually uh, Mega Zero helping him out getting that, so uh, now he has that huge advantage in lane to just keep command protecting and attacking as much as possible, but Shifter just proving to be quite the menace to him. We do see Nintendo Dex looping around in that mid lane towards the river, so we're going to look for something out of that. Well, Ninja Ken kind of hanging around his golems, and this bot lane is going to be that island as well as the Noodle Fest. All right, so in the top Ooh. side of the jungle, there's actually going to be a play backwards onto Chooper now. Cocoon will land on to Daydream and still the dual lane at Coast looking strong. Chooper down to half hit points. Both junglers around the Wraith camp in the upper side of the jungle. So we'll have to see if they decide to fight off from one another. They will catch each other out there. A little bit of damage chained out there. Both junglers do have red buff, but no additional slows to come out as uh, Ninja Ken will actually disengage mid lane. Clown Spar or uh, Nintendo deck still looking for something. Nintendo Dex not having gone back to buy yet, doesn't really have any mana to do anything. He can land one axe and actually could use that X on Jinte. Jinte is so low in the mid lane, Nintendo Dex going to counter jungling now. The smite, who'd it go to? One towards Nintendo Dex, that big blue wraith, that big amount of experience. And it's a little bit of pressure, a little bit of counter jungling, and making sure that Jinte can't receive any backup in the mid lane. 
And with that, the blue, the blue break, going over to Nintendo X, minor victory, so give him up a bit of an advantage. And still, if we look at the CS, in top side, Wiz Fusion coming out very far ahead currently with that 11 CS lead, so Cheaper being pressured, as well as that blue buff on Daydreaming, let him just keep throwing out those death sentences and harass with the flays. So a really good job from that one, as uh, the Wispy content with farming the turret and trying to catch Cheaper back on up. You know, MIA has to be really on point with those auto attacks under turret because the way the Tristana passive works, it's not going to make it at all that easy to keep that CS up underneath that turret in the top lane. Yeah, unfortunately, because Thresh had that early blue buff, that meant a lot more pressure in favor of uh, Coast up in the top lane. So MIA and Trooper stuck underneath the turret, that means that, well, Explosive Shot ruins a lot of last hits. That's considered a normal counter to Tristana. You just push in non-stop and she can't last it reliably underneath the turret. But normally it's hard to do because of the passive, but with the pressure from a blue buff Thresh, you know, that's, that's a lot of extra flay damage to push and that's a lot of la missed last hits. Now I've seen both mid laners go back already. Double Dorians is the item by there for Jinte. He's gonna get knocked around there. There's the minefield just trying to zone him out. Death Sentence though in the top lane. Lands on the Super right on top of those flame choppers. Barriers already out. There's the support at least damage right onto Wiz Fusion, but it's a bounce house out there. Poor Super is going to get himself back to his own turret, stays alive, but still a lot of lane dominance there for Coast. Yeah, that Ignite just taking away, forcing him to jump out of there. He still has Flash to be able to barrier down. It's going to be a big, big deterrent for them to keep on fighting while we do have this end coming up top. Going to walk through the ward in the tri brush. You can see the pings coming in, as well as with Fusion and Daedramon. Now going to go back to having that free lane. Ninja Ken comes on up top. He's going to slide the Cannon in. Go back to AoE clearing. Death Sentence not going to connect. He just walks on straight through, but that'll be the end of that. Yeah, it's all about keeping the turret alive. Can't really make a play because MIA just a a little bit too out of mana. A Nintendo Dex has just been hanging out in the Wraith camp uh, for complexity so far. He knows that uh, at this point Hecarim can't 1v1 him. The Undertow damage and the Reckless movies are too much DPS for a poor little pony Hecarim to handle. So as long as he can stay offensive, focus on countering, focus on slowing him down, that makes Hecarim quite weaker because he hits level 6 uh, relatively slow and Nintendo Dex just gets a decent amount of farm. You know, I always wondered if complexity communicated with Ninja Ken by Morse. I, I I have that on excellent command that that's actually what he speaks, but even still, the communication for the junglers has actually been going better for Team Coast, uh, because not only Nintendo Dex is, like you said, camping out at the Wraith camp, he's doing that because not only does he know where Ninja Ken is, the rest of his lanes don't necessarily need as much help as uh, you've seen Ninja Ken have to provide for less so Mega Zero, but more Jintae, and then that duo lane top, and like you mentioned, the CS differential, about a 20 CS lead already for Wiz Fusion up there, and now just returning back to lane does have a BF sword in his inventory, whereas Super's first die, or first buy rather, was a Doran's and Bam Scepter. We do have Ninja Ken making his way down to the bot lane in the brush, kind of camping out. Not level six just yet, so no, no ulti with the fear available. Major will lead the charge out there. We're not gonna see Blue Buff thrown over to Shifter. Actually, yes, he will. Nintendo Dex gonna toss that one over. Ninja Ken decides it's not worth his time to stay down there and hits level six, and Science Martin does go back as well, so picks up his tabby, his ninja tabby, and uh, some potions, and we'll just go back onto that lane. Now, it's going to be uh, very difficult for Zan Spartan to get a reliable item build this game. Uh, if he goes for straight up uh, Triforce, there's a chance for him to get a power spike from an early Brutalizer, early Tiamat, just to try and shred through him. If he goes straight up for the Blade of the Rune King, then he runs into an issue where his damage just might not be high enough. So he's going to spend a lot more time in lane than he'd like to. He's going to focus more on a laning build, which Doran's Blade, Doran's Shield, it's very efficient. The items provide a lot of good early utility. And against someone like Ribbon, who A, deals a lot of damage, and B, uh, those auto attacks really chunk, you really need the uh, extra defense and extra damage to survive through that. It, it's a pretty defensive option, but he wants to be in this lane for a long, long time. Yeah, just gonna sustain with that one. We do have a Lantern coming in right now, Daydreamin. Maybe looking. He's actually baited. He's just, he's just <laughs> he's fooling them right now. The flay comes in. Trooper not even gonna jump away. We'll just go back to farming that end. Daydreamin, very sneaky, very cheeky. Trying to make it seem like uh, Nintendo X is up there. We do have Ninja Ken roaming on up level 6. Science Barn and Mega Zero just going back into the middle of Noodle Fight. Nobody all inning, nothing crazy going to go down. Ninja Ken is trying to turn right now, so especially going to be very explosive on this wave if he does use that charge. He's going to make Death on to Trooper. There's a cocoon coming in. Flame Chopper's going to be He already flashed. The play <laughs> stops the charge. He's going to pop it with the ultimate, and that's going to be first blood over to Ninja Ken. Now with Red Buff, a Buster Shot into the wall for his fusion. But when Ninja Ken gets the double kill, gets the double, uh, has double buffs in the mid lane, it's gonna be a push in response. <laughs> Easy as pie that gang top lane, and whether or not that's the name of uh, Ninja Ken's pony, he's getting in there for the first couple of kills, taking both of them. And when Ninja Ken gets ahead, you know he does build tanky early on, but it's still, you know, he's not afraid to build damage. We've seen Trinity Force, even Last Whisper, built out on his Nocturne. 
and they really need those kills top lane. You can see the CS difference between Jinx wow. and Trooper. Like, that is 25 CS right now after pushing up to the turret. That is a tremendous difference. And think about this. Jinx will be a lot more powerful than Trissana mid-game just because of her high sustained damage. Trissana will be a lot more effective late-game because she gets attack speed uh, when she attacks from that 700 range, but if, if we see Jinx going into the mid-game more powerful than Trissana, Trooper is just going to be kind of worthless in team fights. So getting those oh, early kills is huge, but Mega Zero. Mega Zero getting dove. There's the stun to come out. Will it land? No, just dashing, dancing Ooh. around, but it's the bouncing bomb from Shifter to pick up the first kill of the game for Coast. Nice. Nice uh, three-man roam there that should free up potentially a dragon. Inch can is rotating towards that. They could have gone for the turret. There was a bit of time before Trooper and uh, anybody else could respond there. They still gave Wiz Fusion and Danger being a free lane with a rotation. So if uh, Complexity can't snag up this dra dragon, it, it doesn't look like it's going to be worth it because they're going to lose that top tier one. A lot of damage on the, bo the bottom tier too as well. Oh, Inch can now trying to pressure. Can deal a lot of slow and deal a lot of DPS. Looks oh. like the red buff to chase him down. He's going to pop the dodge. They throw on the command protect. But nothing else to follow up. That's actually a really nice leap strike from Zion Spartan on the Ninja Ken. He jumped right in front of him, so he pushed him back towards his own turret. Let him get out alive, but uh, at what coast? The, <laughs> the, the, the dragon going down as Ninja Ken secures that one oh. away. Command Shockwave, nice one there from Jinte. Locks down Intended X, but a super Mega Inferno Bomb. Not quite in time. Super Mega Death Rocket landing as well. MIA is probably going to go down there. And it's actually going to be a smite there on the Dragon by Ninja Ken. As now Shifter will take out MIA as it comes back down from his repel. And poor, poor MIA. He was actually in range to repel the Dragon, mm. but Dragon died as he <laughs> went up into the sky. Come I mean, back, Ninja Ken. That is one of those risks, though, had they not smote the Dragon right away. There's a chance that, well, MIA would have missed uh, or still gone down. Dragon could have been stolen, and it would have been really bad. But still an efficient trade. You know, Dragon for a death, it's not great, but you still get a little bit more gold as a team taking Dragon. Complexity though, the loser top turret in that exchange as well, so Coast really taking control of the map. This is kind of that split push pressure starting one more time. Jinx was up in the top lane, playing her game, and well, Coast got another turret out of that. The F Swords, the first big item there for Mega Zero. He's going for Bloodthirster first. No Brutalizers, no... Uh, I know we've seen some like high CDR ribbons with even a very early uh, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, but it's nothing but damage for him looking for that Bloodthirster first. For Jax, it's going to be the Trinity Force. So Trinity Force, uh, talk about that a little bit, Studio. You get that in much smaller chunks, but how's that going to go up against the already big buy there for Mega Zero? Well, Mega Zero is going to have just a larger power spike now. Like, he does have that death, but because he has more raw stats and how well Ribbon scales with just raw AD, it's going to be a little bit more dangerous for Zion Spartan, who uh, has actually finished up the phase. That, that is key for him to uh, maintain the item. So it's going to be all about Mega Zero, who's going to have great spell cast, but no real utility, no real defense in terms of raw HP or raw sustain. So if Zion Spartan can catch uh, Mega Zero with his cooldowns down, he can really abuse him. But if not, it's going to be Mega Zero just going for constant pressure. Speaking of pressure, Ninja Ken trying to apply some of that to Zion Spartan on top. Mega Zero just trading back and forth, does take one of those turret shots. Dash in, looking for some more damage. Are they looking for the dive, though? He's hanging around there. For it. I think he actually got spotted out there. I don't know if that vision is going to be doing that much, but now the charge comes in. He's going to actually back off that. I think they're just going to go for the tier two. He goes in for a little bit of harass there with the charge damage. Mega Zero pops the ultimate, looks to go in, doesn't get the knockout. The shield fades. He still takes full damage from that turret. But the tier two actually going to take a lot of pressure and may go down while down bot. A ton of poke coming in. It looks like four members of Coast should be able to grab that one up, and their dive is going to happen. That flame charges through the turret. A huge command shockwave locks down Daydream, but it's Nintendo Dex. To pick up the first kill now, Ninja Ken very low up top. You're going to have to keep an eye on that wow. lane as well. But there's going to be the execute there right onto MIA. Daydream has got souls. He's a soldier down there looking for another death sentence there on to uh, anyone who can catch. Can't find anyone just yet. And that's because they killed them all. A nice three for one exchange in favor of Cult. A beautiful, beautiful fight. Th that is really taking advantage of the fact that Complexity does not have a super strong team fight support. MIA dealt a lot of damage, was able to get to the back line very quickly, but that's just a support. That is not what they need in, in a big initiation like that. They need the Sona ultimates. They need those big team fight spells. And Jinte right now not doing enough DPS, not having enough CC to really kind of counter that hard initiation compared to Shifter. Well, he's got a he's got big bombs coming right at him. Yeah, and you can just see, Jinte actually landed a pretty nice command shockwave to start the fight off. The only problem is that it was kind of a momentary annoyance, didn't really do a lot of damage, where Shifter, who threw that Mega Inferno Bomb way behind the turret, is set up perfectly for that dive. And, you know, Wisp Fusion did die, but hey, you know, it's, you gotta take one for the team. And now 3 and 0, J Shifter is just starting to look incredibly strong, looking probably for a death cap to come out after his Athene's Unholy Grail.
And uh, Zion's part was actually able to not win that top 1v2, but he didn't give up a kill. He kept his turret alive. As far as Coast is concerned, that's definitely a victory. Unfortunately, Ninja Ken, this is something we saw uh, last game, or last night versus Lopro. Ninja Ken playing Tekron, he's very squishy. Only level 8, doesn't have a whole lot of armor or magic resist, so as a result, when he's diving a turret, it's very easy for someone like Zion's farm to survive long enough for him to force a retreat. And kind of the story this time, he goes for the aggressive dive, but he can't survive enough turret shots, and Mega Zero was also low on HP as well. Yeah, really, really good dive still. Either way, we're going to see the look to go back towards the jungle. The dragon going to be up in a couple minutes. Mega Zero still pushing on up top, looking to get that tier 2, but Zion's starting to respond to him almost eventually. Of course, the blood there's going to be a lot of sustain. It's going to be an initiation in the bot lane. Ignite comes through, looking to get this kill, and it will get passed on over to Wiz Fusion. An easy dive for them. Well, now Shifter looking to go into MIA. Bouncing Bomb comes in. Sasha Charge knocks him at the wall. There's the Mega Death Bomb. The Bouncing Bomb, no, it actually wasn't thrown out in time, so he will be able to just barely get out of there. And with that, a nice strong push going to come in in a minute and a half on the next dragon. And MIA almost getting taken down there. You can see that Cheaper actually put his Trinket Ward in that bottom rush to make sure that he could, uh, you know, hit a back, hit the back button before, without walking all the way back to his turret. But a uh, nice job there, especially by Daydream and Thresh, lanterning in with Fusion there, just cut off Super and were able to take him down. It's a Blade of the Ruin King first build for Tristana, and while that adds Whoa. more dual potential, Ninja Ken getting grabbed out. Looking to see what he does. He runs into the flame choppers, unfortunately. A repel onto the minions. Am I? for a catch here. Mega Zero's on the side, flanks them in the box, gets dropped, he gets played forward, it's gonna be the wind slash for the kill, Daydreaming goes down as MIA gonna get chunked out there, the Super Mega Death Rocket not connecting in from Wiz Fusion on a target that they would look for a kill on, as now the fight may still go on, Wiz Fusion not gonna spot it out by any wards, a lot of pink ward coverage coming in early on in this game from Daydreaming and the whole uh, coast roster. A great flank coming out from Mega Zero, going from the top turret. He realized he could not push into the, into the inhibitor turret. Very dangerous for him to do so. But Zion Spartan is being so pressured right now because he doesn't have any major item compared to the already finished Bloodthirster from Mega Zero. A lot of gold went towards Ninja Tabby, and well, if you play on Riven, you'll have found out that sometimes you just don't need to buy boots. <laughs> yeah, her kit is highly mobile and uh, just going for Bloodthirster. I wonder if she's going to skip her boots and just go for like Last Whisper or maybe almost Ghost Blood or anything like that. Uh, on the other side of the hand, uh, it's Zion Spartan, who's, like, we talked about how he's going to get smaller and smaller Ooh. power boost, but now Ninja Ken getting jumped on there by Nintendo Dex. Nice to see that, you know, Nintendo's got some backup, so it's not necessarily a 1v1, but it's still a big source of strength oh. in the jungle. Oh, Death Sentence misses there. And there's actually a flay backwards, no Death Sentence to follow up. The ward will spot the mouth, they're going to back off. Dragon is currently live, so we're going to see as it looks like both teams are going to send all five members down there, and this could be a big team fight. It's going to be up to Complexity to get that good initiation off. They need Hecarim to get his ultimate <laughs> with a perfect Shockwave Trooper. Got to get over that wall right about now. Oh, they tried to. They all tried to steal that one right there. And it looks like they'll back off and give up the Dragon Pressure. And it looks like this is going to be handed over to Coast. Uh, Complexity just not feeling that confident right now. They're behind in gold. They know they're not the strongest team right now. And even though they've got a lot of really good AoE team by ultimates, they do have some problems. You know, trying to dive into a Ziggs is very dangerous. Uh, because he also has the Minefield and Olaf backup, and, mm. well, frankly, Zion Spartan, I think they're, they're scared of that AoE Counter-Strike stun. So for right now, it's going to be a Lantern out there pulling Shifter back in for a blue buff of his own, or rather, of the enemy teams, taking that away from Complexity. Uh, it, it's been interesting to watch the, the Dragon Control. It's a good indicator for which team has the dominance at that point in the game. It's tied up at 1-1 one one right now, and with the objective lead there, uh, or Coast rather, up two turrets to, uh, or four turrets to two. Now as they push in for another one in the mid lane, turn it down about a couple hundred HP, almost going down with his next push. Mega Zero looking for that flank one more time. The complexity <laughs> though, they put a ward at their blue buff. Like I was looking for, I could not see Mega Zero for a second, uh, or the ward that Mega Zero was spotted out by because he was on it, but Complex or Coast know that, well, fool me once, we're going to uh, go ahead and lose the wow. even. He actually threw the Undertow and smited it, or smote it, excuse me, and <laughs> took away the blue wraith from Ninja Ken. Little, little victories always hurt the uh, pride. <laughs> yeah, Ninja, Nintendo Dex, rather, has been on top of that wraith camp. No wraiths for Ninja Ken this time around. Hopefully, uh, I mean, if raids were oats, I feel like Ninja Ken might fight for them just a little bit more. But hey, it's just one camp, and while that does make Nintendo decks a little stronger, it's not going to be, a, you know, a big thorn in, uh, in Ninja Ken's uh, side. Yeah. What do you think of the Blade of the Ring King rush from Chooper? That's that's Santa Tristana build to help keep himself alive. 
uh, from any sort of dive, like let's say Nintendo Dex. It is not as much damage as it shouldn't be as much, but it's aimed at being much more defensive. So Chuber can survive the damage of a down Spartan, now he can survive Nintendo Dex, but the problem is, can you really output enough compared to Jinx? Top lane though, the duel's going down. Yeah, there's Ignite on the Mega Zero, he's not tanky at all, he's oh. looking for sustain there, we'll flash into the next push, he's gonna dash to another one, there's the wind slash out, it's Ion Spartan, Chuper. he's Chuper's running to the other the side, bottom. there's Chuper. I, I don't know exactly how much to congratulate Chuper on there, but right place at the right time at an epic 1v1 as uh, Zion Spartan unfortunately gets the worst side of that. Mega Zero stays alive. A really, really beautiful fight from Mega Zero, just using the three brushes up there. I don't know if that was what Ryan intended, but he outplayed that perfectly and will net themselves a kill over to Chuper, which he needs it. He was 0-2-2 two two at that point, now 1-2-2. And Complexity, if they fight this now, it's a 5v4. They still have all their major ultimates up. Zion Spartan down for another 5 seconds. They do have the numbers advantage. Blue Buff, he can go. Wow. Here. <laughs> he and got he, it. He's, he's got the smites, man. Like, he missed that first one on Blue Buff, and now he's he's uh, making up for that. Like, he's, he's got to be kicking himself for missing that initial Blue Buff, but now he's, he's just getting every smite he can. And hey, you always got Daydream in there for the backup in case you can't smite your buff away. He's got that down with the auto attacks. And so now, double Blue Buffs there on uh, Shifter and Nintendo Dex. Yeah, that's something to talk about for Team Coast. Nintendo Dex's smites have just been on point this game, and or not just this game, over the course of the entire playoffs. They've just been a consistent source of strength for Coast. So we're coming up on maybe the 20-minute mark, and while we won't see the Baron buff just yet, we'll be looking for that one a little bit later on. And at that point, that really comes back in to be a really important source of strength for Coast. Now, what is going to be the big uh, game plan for Coast? It looks like they're grouping up top lane, not going for that normal split style. Uh, Zion Spartan is very effective in team fights. Having finished that Triforce, maybe he can't dual Mega Zero in the brush, but he can definitely jump on someone like Jinte, someone like Chooper. And with any sort of backup poker, the Mega Inferno Bomb from Chipper can't secure those kills. Top uh, now being pressured, can they get a good initiation? Chooper not in the area. Yeah, Complexity just aren't going to fight that at all. Chooper's all the way down bottom, and while clearing out the wave away from your base turrets is a good idea, that's going to be the last outer turret down for Complexity. Now the only place they have to go with the safety of turrets is going to be their base. Look at the CS difference between Jinx and Chooper one more time. Ooh. It's grown. He's behind by about 70. Uh, it has less assists, has less global objectives to back him on out. So all of a sudden, with Fusion, who is a little bit harder to dive um, compared to the you know, Zion, Spartan, Olaf combination. Jinx doesn't have mobility, but Hecarim's going to be on his own for those dives for the most part. It's really hard for uh, uh, Complexity to actually kill Jinx, and her damage is amazing right now. Considering the gold deficit, Complexity really isn't that much behind. Any team fight could slowly, it could actually just turn the game in an instant. So with this, we'll see how they play it. And I know they're one behind, but Chuper, that Masada, those resets are always very dangerous. You see Mega Zero, the one on Zion Spartan. He's actually confident enough to fight it out with the Trinity Force. Gets the stun, looking for the passive procs, and his ultimate. Gonna actually back on off. MIA does come up, gets spotted off by a ward. They're going to keep Mega Zero safe and give him that escort out. Destin is not going to connect. Zion Spartan was a little bit behind enemy lines there. Managed to put himself on the right side of things. And Mega Zero taking down to half HP. Is going to get some help there from MIA. Zion, though, has the rest Ooh. of his team coming in from behind. Looking for the leap strike. Can't land it on anyone just yet. But still, there's the Mega Inferno Bomb yet left to be thrown for Shifter. Although the uh, Super Mega Death Rocket there just catching out Mega Zero just a little. I, I love that style of play, uh, not just using uh, one finisher, but they had the execute available on Ziggs as well. So there was a lot of potential ways to finish off Mega Zero right there. Very neat play and a very different style. If Zion Spartan starts a 1v1, if Wiz Fusion starts a 1v1, then there's going to be backup from at least one other champion because they have two global finishers, essentially. So very cool style of play from Coast. Yeah, I really like the uh, the Jinx and Ziggs combo where you just, hey, somebody's going down, you're going to hit them with one thing. You're going to hit them with <laughs> another. There's a lot of long-range scouting. You could fit like an Ezreal or an Ash into that. There would be a lot of really cool combos that you could do with that. But it's working out. Command Ooh. Shockwave forces a flash out from Coast, and now Coast looking to run back up the middle lane. Complexity forced to disengage. I wonder if Nintendo Dex is actually going to throw the Undertoes, catch him, and try to chase this down. He's going to lead the charge. Picked up the Undertoes, gets the reset, but not looking for anything just yet. Talisman Ascension not completed for Daydream, so no speed boost to catch him up. Pinkor was actually dropped in the middle of the lane. This could be a bait for a fight. They might try to get that one. Death Specs out of MIA. Ninja there will can. be a speed up with a Ninja Can. They're looking to go into the Daydream. And no flash freshly used. The bomb comes in. Almost Jinte getting taken out there. Mega Zero are going to get slowed out. They're going to use Repel to get away. But the Undertoes connecting. Fishbones is active. The range is going to chase this one down. Undertow connects to the oh. Super Mega Rocket from 
<laughs> Nib Wish Fusion will pick up the kill on Mega Zero and now potentially an inhibitor turret gonna fall up 20 to four and a half minutes. The combo for that fight was supposed to be Ninja Ken jumping in there and having the command shockwave with Jinte, but Jinte actually used it to force out, I believe it was the flash from Daydream and earlier on, so there really wasn't Ooh. a whole lot of synergy. Oh, nice dodge from the cocoon. Zion Spartan looking to go back in. Oh man, Mega Zero chunked down there, forced to repel away from the minions, but Zion Spartan relentless gonna leap on top of that one, tries to get Trooper, but now we'll get kited away, ignited, and Ninja Ken gonna keep them forward, but Shifter gonna go in the back line, Bouncing Bob does not connect, forcing the flash out of Jinte, but in the meantime, the inhibitor is gonna get focused down and taken out as the first inhibitor at 25 minutes goes over to Team Coast. Beautiful, beautiful fight from Coast. Uh, they saw the initiation from Ninja Ken, they knew Complexity was turning around. Even without Zion Spartan there at the beginning of the fight, they were able to kite and protect Jinx. So who got focused down that fight? Daydreaming. Because once Hecarim landed, once he'd already used that initiation, he had no real tool to, to stick on a Jinx at that point, had the Flame Chompers down to protect herself, had Daydream and Tossing out plays. So the main focus for Cole was going to be that one single support. Leaving the high DPS Jinx, leaving the high DPS Ziggs all in the background, waiting for their Jacks to come and just take out that fight. If Complexity can get to the back line, that'll be huge, but you know, Mega Zero has to get through a Thresh, Mega Zero has to get through a Jax, and Olaf and the Slows, and there's so many ways to stop Mega Zero from really completing that initiation. And you can on his own can't do everything. And if you're trying to push for Complexity, you're, you're just looking for an objective right now. They only have two turrets, so I guess that's a good thing because it means there's a lot of turrets, a lot of options for them to push, but you can't push against Shifter, who, especially with the low cooldown from having a blue buff, having a, um, the, the Athena's and Holy Grail. It's just going to make the cooldown on Mega Inferno Bomb so low, and especially with the additional bonus damage that it does to minions, you're going to be able to clear out almost any push that Complexity try to make here. So for Complexity, in order to bring this back, they're going to have to win a fight, and it's going to take that big synergy between Ninja Ken and Jinte to make it happen. And now Shifter is reaching the scary point of the game when he's about to finish up with Bane. Oh. And the way Ziggs works, his passive uh, enhances his auto attack, and if you cast, you know, a bouncing bomb, which Ziggs is known to do every every now and then, his burst is insane, but Zion Spartan might be caught out in the top lane. It will be the best shot into the wall, they dodge away from the stun, he gets split of the Rune King, Mega Zero jumps over the wall, flashes it, gets the stun through the Leaf Strike, the Wind Slash comes in, will they be able to chase this one down? Leaf Strike has a very low cooldown at this point in the game, he will go towards the wards, the winds, uh, the Broken Wings, to chase this one out from Mega Zero, is he going to give up the chase? He's going to keep going, Me Zion Spartan does get to the turret, can they go any further? Mega Zero going a little hard right now, looking to get Zion Spartan, but the minions in the turret eventually going to stop him, and that's a nice escape from Zion Spartan. Mega Zero couldn't get over that wall. <laughs> but Coast in response pushing in the top lane now. They know that Mega Zero is not going to be there, and actually Mega Zero oh, stole the Ninja area. Ninja Ken, Ninja Ken, he's going to get pulled back in there. <laughs> he doesn't want to be with you always. He's going to go down, and there's going to be a nice kill. Perfect catch there for Team Coast as they look to crack the base, pushing in the top lane. You can unfortunately Ooh. can't get away. Oh, that ultimate, it's huge from Jinte, but there's no follow-up. They needed their Hecarim, they needed their pony, but fortunately already taken out. All right, so he actually mainly used that to just clear out the whole wave to keep it from pushing, but now it's going to be down for the next fight. They're going to let the Siege just out. Dissonance does connect on the Nintendo X, but in the meanwhile, Mega Zero still pushing that bot lane and does secure a turret, so trying to capitalize on whatever advantages, he'll go back to base and try to make it a 5v4 for the next fight. Coming out of base, he doesn't have boots. There's actually the completion of Mercury Treads, but no home guards available to him just yet. He's going to come out wow. the slow way. Ninja Ken, <laughs> one fast pony coming out there, but no one to initiate on and grabbing the Lantern with Fusion. The rest of Coast will disengage. Coast, they have that admitted inhibitor down. They have the map control, so for them, applying pressure is not so much about trying to finish the game very quickly. Their late game is fantastic, but more about making sure Complexity can't do anything. If you look at the ward coverage, there really isn't a whole lot across the map, but it's just some defensive wards from uh, Complexity and some aggressive uh, deep in the Complexity jungle uh, ward coverage for themselves. Bot lane, it looks like Zion Spartan actually being chased up by Mega Zero. But Mega Zero can't actually catch Zion Spartan. That's the problem for, Me for Zion. All he has to do is run away. Known as one of the big split pushers, uh, not only in just North America, but for most of Team Coast's team compositions, it's, you're used to seeing him push, you're used to seeing him fight, but really right now all he's doing is weakening complexity by forcing Mega Zero to keep running around, keep trying to chase him, because Mega Zero is just wasting his time. That really takes a big chunk out of the potential that complexity have to win these team fights. And if you look at the, the farm, who's got the most gold in the game uh, for complexity? It's going to be Mega Zero. He's got the most minion kills. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of kills on the team uh, at all. So the fact that he's stuck 
trying to 1v1 a Jax, who is still getting farm and now has Lair the Rune King means it's a lot of wasted potential, a lot of wasted damage. Now, Coast, they're feeling sneaky. Oh, they have four pink wards around this Baron side. They have everything cleared out. Mega Zero. Is he going to be the one? It will be the hook onto him as well. Destin, it's going to connect as well as the play, the box, the ignite, the bombs from everybody coming in. Shifter picks up the kill on a rampage. And now, with that, it could signal a Baron or maybe even more catches as they will drop all the wards. The Undertow connects on MIA. And Liz Fusion makes his way into the pit. They will be looking to start this one out potentially. There's a scrying orb actually being used out there by Nintendo Dex. As he did, not Nintendo Dex, by Daydream, and he did sell his warding totem. So we'll use that to a little effect. Try to scout out MIA and Ninja Ken. But with that, they're in the pit. Desidus does not connect. They will be able to clear out that ward very easily. And will this be the Baron? Yeah, the, the, there is a little bit of a bug with Scrying Orb where you can actually reveal wards and areas of the map for a much longer oh, duration oh, than intended. But just look oh, at that damage. Oh, 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 Mega Death Rocket comes through Wiz Fusion with a nice snipe there on Ajinte. All right. You don't even need to have them in range. That was a zap into a bouncing pop into this explosion. It's unfortunate for Ajinte, but that is the strength of both Ziggs and Wiz Fusion playing that Jinx. So much range damage. Mega Zero being taken down to the bot lane. Can he 1v1? Can he survive? No. Zion Spartan with that player of the Rune King Triforce finished up. He's got nothing. And the Baron. There we go. See, no one's jumping in the pool just yet. We're going to have the Baron <laughs> buff there on Team Coast. Now it's Zion jumping on a Trooper. Can't Trooper make it happen? He's going to rocket jump away. Wow. Flash in! Zion Spartan gets the kill. Now it's MIA in a 1v1, but it's not something he's going to be able to win. Ties it wow. up. Trades one for one, but Zion just doesn't tie. Takes three members of Complexity to kill him. Everyone dead right now for Complexity died at the hands of Zion. That was beautiful. Uh, there was that... Uh, Jinte pick, I guess. That was like the one kill that uh, did not go to Zion. And in the end, like that is Zion taking out three members compared to the rest of his team taking out one, but still <laughs> the Baron is taken out, another inhibitor goes down. Uh, Jax is just too strong at this point. Mega Zero clearly can't 1v1 him. Oh, there's yes, a grab yes. there on a Jinte. Mega Inferno Bomb takes him out there. Wiz Fusion's pushing the rest of the complexity back onto their Nexus uh, onto their Nexus Fountain. And now with one turret going down, another hook lands onto uh, Mega Zero. There's a dash in from Daydream and won't be going down or onto Daydream from Ninja Ken. He's going to be running around. Nintendo Dex throws down Ragnarok wow. and it is in fact the end of days for Trooper as Wiz Fusion just takes him down. Should be actually game as it will be Mega Zero home guarding in, trying to catch anybody out. They're actually trying to hold this one out. Undertow does connect. Death Sentence on a Mega Zero though. Into the flame trap machine. Flashes in. Still stunned up by that one. The Super Mega Death Rocket does not connect. Mega Zero uh, Ninja Kid going through the back line. Taking out Dejami. Shifter dominating. Does cut out MIA. And with that, the final Nexus turret is going to go down. That's going to be game one of the grand finals here at the NACL to Team Coast. And that is going to do it 18-8, to eight, a dominant performance from Coast as they not quite coasting in on there to their Game 1 victory, but still a very dominant performance across the board.